Now then people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. It is Tuesday the 27th of July. It is pre-season start day. The season is getting closer. Pre-season games are starting. We play Geisley tonight around 7.30. Um, the home of the Lions, it is called the home of the Lions. Unfortunately, I won't be at the game. I've been to Geisley a few times, but uh, weren't lucky enough to get a ticket this time around. But yeah, pre-season is among us. And that means we're getting closer to the 16th of August and, of course, Manchester United away. We've got loads to get into on today's video. Before we do, like, please, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. And, of course, vote for me in the Football Content Awards. The link is in the description. Uh, I'm not going to do this for much longer. I've done enough I've done enough pleading now. But, yeah, vote for me in the Best New Content Creator category. Also, plenty of elite content creators doing stuff. All these TV, Lewis, Connor, uh, LUFC, fans on everyone. So it's just all leads our way. Leads always take more. Vote for whoever you like. But if you could, best new content creator, your boy, Just Joe at the Just Joe Football Show. And let's get into today's video. So, guys, we're going to start first of all with, of course, chat of pre season. Leeds United get their pre season schedule underway tonight against AFC Geisley. Um, it's the first of four fixtures in five days, so it's a jam-packed, you know, pre-season for the lads. Of course, we play Geisley tonight. We've got Blackburn Wednesday, Fleetwood Friday, and then that is uh, followed by Real Betis at the Loughborough. Uh, Loughborough University, I believe. Tickets for that game go on sale at 1pm today, guys. The remaining tickets for that game against Real Betis. So if you're interested in going... And as I say, they'll be available um, on the Leeds United website. And then, of course, we'll conclude our pre-season campaign with a trip to the Amsterdam Arena when we face Dutch champions AFC Ajax. Um, that's 10 days before the start of the season, which obviously we open up against that team from across the Pennines at Old Trafford. Um, we won't be able to do a watch-along for tonight's game for Geisley because... There's not going to be any live showings of that game. We're just going to obviously see goals and live updates on Leeds United, uh, Twitter, Facebook, etc. But guys, the rest of the games will be available uh, on um, the uh, Live Now Global app, Live Now website. It's Andrea Radrazani's new company. I don't know if it's taken over 11 sports, but basically you can see all pre-season games. That's Blackburn on the 28th, Fleetwood on the 30th, Real Betis on the 31st, and of course, Ajax on the 4th of August. It is £12.99 um, to pay for all four of them games. You can buy them individually. Um, there was a bit of a mess up where it was actually cheaper to buy them individually than in the pack, but that's changed now, and you can buy all four games for £12.99. If you don't fancy doing that, I will be doing it. I will be doing a watch along for each of them preseason fixtures. So if you just want to watch along with myself, you're more than welcome to join me. But if not, twelve ninety nine, you can get all four pre four preseason games. Obviously, barring Geisley on the Live Now app website, all that sort of stuff. He, you know, it's Andrea Radrazani's company. So if that tickles your pickle, get yourself over there and get them games bought. But yeah. I wonder what will happen tonight. Obviously, we play Geisley. I'm expecting a, a, a young side, a very young side. Maybe we'll see Lewis Bate, Sean McGurk, Ellie Capri would obviously start in goal because we've not yet confirmed Christopher Klassen. Um, at the back, you're looking at Creswell, um, maybe Cody Drama. I just can see even maybe you might get Perveda, for example, Greenwood, Geldar. I just can't see the first team as playing in this one. They'll be saved for Blackburn, which will be in 24 hours' time. But it'll still be a game that I'll be um, waiting to see what the score is and who's on the on the score sheet for Leeds United. Hopefully, we'll win that game. Um, but, yeah, that's pre-season out of the way. As I say, I'll bring reports to you tomorrow's show, what the results were and what the main talking points were. Um, we're now just going to quickly touch on Conor Gallagher. I, I believe it might be time for Leeds United, Victor Orta, to move on from Conor Gallagher. Um Joe Donoghue put up a picture um, yesterday and was just saying it'll be tough to persuade Conor Gallagher to join Leeds over Crystal Palace. We know he probably wants to stay down south. And not only that, Mark Guehi, who's just signed for Crystal Palace from Chelsea, um, they both joined Chelsea uh, at the same time in 2007. 
Um, and since 2016 to 17, Gallagher and Gueye have played 105 times together for Chelsea, England and Swansea. So the fact that he's gone to Crystal Palace, you'd imagine Conor Gallagher's thinking, yeah, look, Chelsea don't want to move me on permanently. Maybe if it was a permanent move, you would maybe favour the move to Leeds United. I'm not sure. I think it's a no-brainer for me. Why wouldn't you want to go work under Marcelo Bielsa? But, I, you know, i seen pictures of Chelsea's pre-season the other day and Lewis Baker was there. And I'm thinking, if Lewis Baker's getting in his ear, he's probably saying, mate, I went there and didn't get no game time. Reason being, Lewis Baker was pants. He was offered, look, stay on, and he decided to go elsewhere. But it is what it is. I, I think maybe it's time for... Leeds United to move on from Conor Gallagher. And, and that's the reason I want to bring up Jens Kajusta, uh, the Swedish international that plays for FC Midgetland, or Midgetland as I like to call them. Um, I know we heard from his agent previously via LUFC Fan Zone saying that a number of Premier League clubs are in for him, but, but one of them that isn't is Leeds United. Um, but the Athletics seem to think otherwise. So uh, the Athletic are reporting that Leeds are definitely in for Jens Kajusta, um, and Midgetland have insisted on a fee of around about 15 million euros, which equates to around about 12.5 million. Um, so the Swedish international, um, he's got a number of admirers from across the Premier League. Leeds, according to The Athletic, are one of several clubs to have been linked to him. Um, and we can get him done for as little as 15 million euros, which I know it's still 15 million euros, but it's very cheap. It's very cheap. So maybe it's time for Leeds United. And look, the fact that the Athletic are still running with that story means there's legs to it for me. I, there's certain journalists who think, OK, there's something in that. Leeds United Live continue to profile him and, and continue to speak about him. So it's like, OK, Yangel Herrera looks set for West Ham. Conor Gallagher, look, it's been a month since Victor Art spoke to him and he's still still not come. Maybe Leeds United and Auto don't want to throw in the towel because I do think it'd be perfect for us with Conor Gallagher. But look, we'll have to wait and see. But Jens Kajusta, look, young Swedish midfielder, played in the Euros. He's known for his all-action and tough tackling style of play. And he's got attributes that would suit Leeds United's high-intensity style of play down to the ground. So look, if we can't get Conor Gallagher, if we're not going to go for Yangel Herrera, then this is the next next best option for me, Jens Kajusta. Um, so hopefully, and at that price, and it's a permanent deal, and he's 21 year old. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it makes sense to me over maybe Conor Gallagher. Look, I prefer Conor Gallagher. That's just my opinion. I think a lot of people would if it was a permanent move or a loan with a view to a permanent. I think it is just the fact that it is just a loan and that's it. And fans are like, well, no, we're not doing it. It's Chelsea. We're not making their play better, etc. And I get it. I do get it. Um, one player that definitely won't be returning is Kiko Casilla. He seemingly called time on his Leeds United career. Um, he said, look, it's normal. It's a loan option until the end of the season. But when it's over, if everything goes well, there will be no problem in me continuing to stay. He says, my intention is to stay in Spain, which we all thought was would be the case. It's time for Leeds United. It's done. He's saying that himself. Although I'm still contracted there, it's a loan if I do well, I'm going to stay. If I don't do well at this club, I still want to stay in Spain. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, it looks like there's been a U-turn as well in the Leaf Davis situation. Apparently, he's undergone a medical at Bournemouth yesterday. Uh, and the transfer could be completed as early as today. There's been a, a quick U-turn. Obviously, we heard that the deal was off. But apparently, Leaf Davis completed a medical and the transfer could be announced very soon. I don't know if it's with a loan, loan with a view to permanent. We'll have to wait and see. But it looks like he's heading for game time at Championship Bournemouth under the tutelage of Scott Parker. Um, guys, I just want to touch briefly on Dan James. Dan James is one player that will continue to be linked to Leeds United. I know not a lot of years are on board with it. It's the same with Ryan Kent. If these players become available, Leeds United will have a nibble. Now, Marcus Rashford at Manchester United is due to have a consultation on his shoulder this week, possibly today, OK? Um, and they will wait to see the outcome on whether or not they need to go for surgery, OK? Now, the main reason that Dan James is still a Manchester United player is because of this information around Marcus Rashford. If Marcus Rashford doesn't have to go through surgery and he's all good to go for the start of the season, then it sounds like Manchester United would be willing to listen to offers either permanent or loan for Dan James. Now, we know 
that Victor Orta and the club have already said that they expect the winger to go late into the window. Noah Lang, for example, will he, you know, take a certain amount? We know that he wants to leave Bastos. His teammate was saying so. Manchester United, Dan James, they're holding on. Are they waiting to see on Rashford and then they're going to go Victor? You can have Dan James. So it's just something to keep your eyes on, guys. If Rashford doesn't have to go for surgery, then you might see some movement from Dan James. And even if that's still, even if that's to another club other than Leeds United, at least we can wipe our hands of it and say, yeah, it's definitely not happening now. He's moved elsewhere, you know? Um, but we'll have to wait and see on that. One winger that won't be coming is Nottingham Forest, Brennan Johnson. We spoke about him a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, young Welsh youngster, um, been smashing it at Lincoln, I believe he was on loan in League One. But it appears that Nottingham Forest uh, and Chris Hewton are saying, look, no, we want to keep him at Nottingham Forest. We're going to play him in the senior squad in the championship. Of course, Leeds would have brought him in as an under-23. He would have gone in there, but he looks like he's been offered first-team football at championship level. And you can understand Brennan Johnson saying, do you know what? I want to stay. So it looks like that one will not be happening. Just while we're on the under-23s as well, guys, the under-23s will kick off their Premier League 2 Division 1 campaign on Monday, the 16th of August at 7pm, away to Crystal Palace. Now, their home games will be played at a number of locations. Thorpe Arch, York City Stadium and Ellen Road. Now, I'd imagine there's a lot of the fan base that would like to go see the under-23s. We have a great squad there. We know how Bielsa sometimes likes to use the first teamers in that setup as well. So I know a lot of you will be waiting to hear the news, which, which one of them games will be at Ellen Road. I wouldn't mind going myself. I'm not working currently. I'm waiting to start university. If I've got time on my hands, I'll pop down to Ellen Road. I'll pop to York to watch them. So it's good. Then it's not just going to be all at Thorpe Arch. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I'd imagine the tickets will be you know a top pounce won't they really to be fair so um yeah that that that's good to hear that the under 23s will be playing some of their games at ellen road and york city's stadium this season um just while we're on tickets as well i mentioned at the top of the show but just in case you miss it at 1 p.m today you can get tickets the remaining tickets that are left for the real bettis game at loughborough university as just to finish as well we've got two no news stories for you first of all i'm going to start with the lufc trust so if you remember i spoke to you a couple of days ago um about them donating some football kits to slow law uh, and a number of kids that are underprivileged that might not have the opportunity to get these sort of you know expensive kits which is what they are you know I, I, i've been there myself when i was a young and i think you know it is what it is it is what it is and the trust have now got together to try and donate some more money to kit out these kids i'm going to pass you over to graham now who works for the lufc trust who's going to give you some more information so this is just a little video to explain uh, what lufc trust are currently trying to do in terms of making available kits to kids from inner city areas so we've teamed up with slung low um, who are based at the holbeck in holbeck uh, close to the ground and what they do is they run a kids club across uh, leeds that brings people from underprivileged backgrounds together allows them an opportunity to build their confidence uh, really just get kind of a chance to you know grow as individuals as young kids uh, and do that now when we saw that the club were sending out pr gimmicks shirts to celebrities you know kind of instagram influencers etc that don't even care about Leeds United. We thought that given the pricing on current kits, there's lots and lots of kids in inner city Leeds that would love a shirt, but can't afford it. So we as a trust decided we would donate 20. Uh, we've now set up an additional uh, just giving page for anybody who wants to contribute so we can give even more. I think we're currently at around about 40 shirts. So um, if you have a look at the uh, trust socials at LUFC Trust, um, then you'll be able to find the link, the just giving link, which will enable it if you want to donate and help. And just make sure that kids get a chance to wear a lead shirt, to be proud of that, to be connected with the city and just really to make sure that they're part of what's happening at Leeds United because the chances are they're not going to get tickets um, given the, the, you know, the, how rare the, getting hold of tickets are, but they're the future. you know. So we need to connect with them 
make them feel part of this and for those who may be where 45 quid would be just you know way beyond their dreams of being able to afford we're going to help out families um so that they can be part of that see what a great initiative that's what it is all about and that's what the football club the trust everything that he's like at Leeds united at the moment is it's absolutely brilliant as i say there is a just giving link in the link to this description if you can give anything just do. And then, as I say, I'm sure they'll share pictures and whatnot. And it's just amazing. And like Graham said, they are the future, right? It's about that next generation of fans. You know, when I went to play football against Leeds United um, media team the other week, um, the amazing thing was being there. And honestly, it was spot the guy without a Leeds United shirt. And that's not always been the case. That has not always been the case. But genuinely, 90% of people there at Leeds goals were all in Leeds United shirts. And that's what it's about, man. And these kids, like Graham says, might not have the opportunity, these families, to, to be, you know, I, I, I've been there. I've been there as a young and growing up. I get it. I get it. I'll never forget the first time I got my first kit and I went training for South Farham Colts on Manor Eve Park. Uh, uh, in Halifax where I grew up and honestly I was absolutely buzzing that my mum had bought me a kit like the first time you know she broke the bank for it kind of vibe it was the Nike Strongbow white one and um, I went sliding about yeah sliding about like a madman because I was in this kit I thought I could take on the world so I was like diving in boom boom yeah boom and genuinely I ruined it my socks were ruined. My shorts stayed on the bum. Shirt wasn't too bad, but the socks, shorts ruined. And I went home and I cried. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Walking through that door and my mum going, what have you done, Joe? And I was like, oh, it'd be all right. And then it was just then I cried. I cried my eyes out. <laughs> Bit of a story there for you. But that's what I'm saying, though. It meant the world that, you know, I got the kit. It got the kit, so I, I I get why, and that's why I wanted to share that as well, man. So the links in the description. They're looking to raise a thousand. Last time I checked, it was up to about three hundred. Give what you can. Give what you can. Um, and just to finish, guys, uh, I touched on this yesterday um, about the um, vaccination passports, etc. Um, and if you will need to get them into grounds from, I think it's October. And um, now apparently there's going to be a meeting between Premier League managers. They will hold talks on this issue of the COVID-19 vaccine passports before the start of the new season. And um, so members of the League Managers Association will hold meetings over the course of the next two weeks to address whether those admitted to football stadiums in England will need to hold a relevant vaccine passport because it does put people who don't want to have the vaccine and again that's entirely their opinion in a position where i've got to have it if i want to get into the ground i listen i've had mine you know it is what it is but there's some that don't so as i say more will be revealed i assume over the next coming two weeks as i say managers are going to have the say on it you know what i mean so i know that players managers staff they all have to have it they all have to have it and there'll be people in the footballing world that won't want to have it and that's, again, everyone is entitled. Whatever you think, everyone is entitled to their own decision. It's them, isn't it? It's their body. Yeah, it's their body. Um, but, yeah, listen, make sure you donate to Slung Law. Vote for me in the Best New Content Creator section. Smash a like on this video. Subscribe. All that jazz. Enjoy Geisley if you are going. I'll bring you in the news to it tomorrow morning. Um, but, yeah, just have a great day. Pre-season, man. Pre-season. And it won't be long before the season starts in Manchester United away. I cannot wait, man. I cannot wait. But, yeah, thanks as always for watching. Peace out. Leeds, leeds, leeds.